Hello and welcome everybody to Contemporary Math. We're going to do the second part of 3.4 in this lecture, uh, Variations of Conditional Statements. So, in our conditional statement, the symbolic form that we've been dealing with is just P arrow Q. And remember we read that, if P, then Q. So, today we're going to talk about three different ways that we can write a conditional statement and we can vary the conditional statement. One is we can have the converse of the statement and this is when we switch the P and the Q and we say if Q then P. Okay, So the converse just switches the if and the then of our conditional statement. Now the inverse is read if not P, then not Q. So in comparing this up to our conditional statement, we simply negate the P and then we negate the Q. For the contrapositive, we get if not Q, then not P. So here, we negate the P and the Q and we switch them. Okay, so it's kind of like a combination of the converse and the inverse put together. So again, these all refer back to that original conditional statement. All right, so for example one, it says write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the following statement. If there is a space station, then we will explore outer space. So when I look at this, I see it's in the form P arrow Q. And so we're going to let P be there is a space station and we're going to let Q be we will explore outer space. So we already have the conditional statement and for converse what we want to do here is we're going to switch the P and the Q of our conditional statement. So thanks to technology I can do this very easily. I'm just going to take this Q and I'm going to put it first. I'm going to take this P and I'm going to put it second. And then I just need to fill in a little bit. So I'm going to say if we will explore outer space then there is a space station. So that's what we did. We just switched the P and the Q. For the inverse, this one, all we want to do is negate the P and the Q. So we have negation P, arrow, negation Q. So in this case, do I switch the P and the Q? No. So I'm just going to take, take this P here. And that's going to go first. And then exploring outer space is still going to be second. But we're going to change it a little bit. We're going to make this a negative. So if there is not a space station, then we then we will not explore outer space. Okay, so hopefully you can see the negation there, but we left it in the same order. For the contrapositive, this one, we actually end up switching the P and the Q and negating both of them. Okay, so actually, uh, all we have to do is take this inverse and switch it around. We're going to take the first part. Okay. 
Okay, so what we're going to do here is take our Q, we're going to put that first, then take our P, and we're going to put that second. And then we are going to negate these. So if we will not explore outer space, then there is not a space station. Okay, so for the first one, all we had to do was switch. For the inverse, all we have to do is negate. And for the contrapositive, we just do both. So we switch and negate. All right. I want you to try example two on your own. You're given P is the number is divisible by three, Q is the number is divisible by three. And I want you to write out the conditional statement, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive of the original conditional statement. And then go ahead and tell which of these are true. So I want you to pause the video, come on back when you're done to check your work. All right, welcome back. Go ahead and check your conditional converse, inverse, and contrapositive statements. All right, let's move on. What we want to do now is go ahead and find the truth tables for all four of these variations. So for conditional, we're going to find this truth table. For contrapositive, that is this one right here. For converse, This right here, and for inverse, okay. And so, since we're only dealing with two statements, P and Q, our general cases are going to look like this. Okay. So let's go ahead and work on these truth tables. So here we can fill in the P and the Q. And then our final answer here, if true, then true is true. If true, then false is false. If false, then true is true, and if false, then false, that's also true. So for a conditional statement, here is the answer to the truth table. Now let's go ahead and find the truth table for the contrapositive. So negation Q, we want to negate Q, so we're going to switch these right here. So we get false, true, false, true. For negation P, we want to switch these right here. And we get false, false, true, true. And then we perform our conditional. So false, arrow, false is true. T arrow, false, that's false. False, arrow, true, that's true. And then true, arrow true, is also true. So here is the answer to the contrapositive. Now, if we take what we learned before, let's look at these answers and compare them. So conditional was true, false, true, true. The contrapositive is true, false, true, true. So what that's telling me 
is that the conditional and the contrapositive are actually equivalent statements. So when you say if p then q and if not q then not p, you're actually saying the same thing. I want you to go ahead and find the truth tables for converse and inverse on your own and then compare their truth tables and then make a statement about the converse and the inverse. So go ahead and try this on your own. You can pause the video and then come back and check your work. All right, welcome back. Go ahead and check your work on the truth tables here. And what you should have noticed when you compare these is that they are the same. So the converse is equivalent to the inverse. Now, if we think about what the contrapositive did to the conditional, so it negated both and then it switched both, and then those became equivalent. Well, if we look at the converse, the converse is if q then p. So if we negate both of these and switch them, what are we left with? Well, we're left with negation p, arrow, negation q. So we can see that the converse and the inverse have the same relationship as the conditional and the biconditional, and that is that they're both equivalent. All right, for example three, now we want to be able to determine which of the statements are equivalent. So we have four statements and we want to see which of these are saying the same things. So we just want to get our P and our Q. We're going to let P be uh, you leave by 9 a.m. And then we're going to let Q be you get to your destination on time. Okay, so what we want to do here is convert all of these statements into symbolic statements. So this one, if you leave by 9 a.m. is a P, then, is an arrow, you will get to your destination on time, Q. And we can see that this is the conditional. Now, letter B, it says you do not leave by 9 a.m. or you will get to your destination on time. So you do not leave by 9 a.m. So that's not P. Or you will get to your destination on time, which is Q. Now, this one is not a variation of a conditional statement, so we'll just have to deal with that in a bit. For letter C, it says, it is false that. So that means negation parentheses. So you get to your destination on time, which is Q, or you did not leave by 9 a.m. So not P. For letter D, if you do not get to your destination on time, then you did not leave by 9 a.m. So if you did not get to your destination on time, is not Q. Then is our arrow. Then you did not leave by 9 a.m., so not P. And this one right here is the contrapositive. Now right away, we know that the conditional and the contrapositive are equivalent. So those two are saying the same things. For these two, what we want to try to do is change these into conditional statements. And so you're just going to recall here from our first part of 3.4 that we can rewrite a conditional statement as negation p or Q. So this is one of the things we learned along with the Morgan's Laws. So if we look at letter B, 
negation p or q. We can change any or can become an arrow by leaving the second part and negating the first part. Okay, see how that works? So you negate the first part, arrow and or, leave the second part. So, since I know these are equivalent, we know that B is also equivalent to this. Now in our letter C, we have, it is false that, so the negation on the outside, we're gonna apply that to everything on the inside, so it becomes negation Q. We're gonna flip the or to an and, and then the negation of negation P is just gonna be P. Now we don't have any rules for changing an and statement into a type of conditional. And so this one is not going to be equivalent, but letters A, B, and D are. All right, I want you to go ahead and try A, B, and C for example four on your own. And then you can check your work. So go ahead and pause that video and try it on your own. All right, welcome back. So you should have let P be you graduate from college, Q you get a college degree. Uh, letter A you should have translated to if P then Q and that's our conditional. Letter B you should have translated to if negation Q then negation P and that's our contrapositive which we know is the same thing as the conditional so it's equivalent there. And then for letter C you should have translated this into negation P or Q which we can change into a conditional statement by negating the first one, so it becomes P, changing the OR to an arrow, and then changing, uh, leaving Q exactly as it is. So that is the same as the conditional, so all three of these statements are equivalent. All right, for these questions here, we're gonna be discussing these in class, so I want you to spend some time thinking about uh, these four here. You can just jot down your answers, uh, jot down an example, and then we'll discuss these when we come back to class. All right, that's it for our 3.4b notes, variations of conditional statements. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in class.